Now, when you lay, lay out the garden, you have to make clear cut uh, areas for people to walk around. And uh, in these landscape gardens and all, what I have seen, uh, not normally what they do is, they put some some stone or something uh, that uh, some external item they get from outside some uh, boundary material and then they put it along the edges so that uh, there is a demarcation between the uh, walking area that's for walking and on both sides you can have the plants I am very particular about having a clear cut uh, walking paths because otherwise people will trample all over the nice plants. Particularly the smaller ones like this, which uh, are neither noticed nor uh, just doesn't register in people's mind these small, small plants. Anyway, so for all these plants, <coughs> you can't have people stepping on them and all. So, uh, what we do here, what I like to do, is not to fetch stuff from far away and all that and then lay it in straight rows. I prefer a more natural formation. This is all dried wood and uh, which has fallen down from our border trees. When these branches become redundant, they fall down. So, uh, you can just lay them out in a row. Like, like what we have done here now. And then uh, this this kind of uh, border, uh, if when you do it, what happens? One is the these trees and all these branches contain the mycorrhizal fungi, and also the mycelium and all will start going into the earth, and then finally it will come to that flowering stage, and these mushrooms will appear. For example, in this branch, uh, three mushrooms I can see straight away. One is that, the other one is this, and one more here also. Here, here I saw uh, this one. So, like these, they'll come, and then if it is not, uh, it will not be that even. If you lay bricks or uh, some cement. Uh, those pillars and all such boundary items it adds to the carbon footprint and all because you have to fetch that stuff from somewhere in lorries and all that and it costs money also moreover it's unnatural when you put branches you put try to put the bigger logs and then there are gaps and all you gaps and all you can put smaller things twigs and all that and some local rocks whatever is around your garden you can plonk them here and there so, this will all degrade slowly and then uh, earthworms and these millipedes and all will, termites and all will slowly take it into the earth from here and it will enrich your soil, the boundary area and then it provides uh, some safe space for these uh, millipedes and then ant nests. Ants and all like to nest in places like this. Then uh, that mushrooms and all will enter the earth. I mean that underground, that soil health will improve because of the mushrooms and all that will appear on these. And uh, so in a proper real biodiversity garden, when people design it, I recommend this. Put logs of tree, trees and twigs and all that into a nice straight row and then uh, some local stones and all what you find like this over here there is one granite stone has been put so a few stones and all you can keep like this because underneath that the scorpions and then millipedes centipedes Atoms, ants, they all get some habitat to hide in the daytime and get some safety, make their nests and all. And uh, here also you can see mushrooms have appeared. So, uh, 
So, that is the way to do your boundaries and allow this to slowly decompose. And then on both sides of these, this uh, row, you can arrange your plants accordingly. About how to plant and what type of plants to plant and all, I have to do a separate video, it's a topic by itself. But in these walking areas, you need to have clear cut path and then the demarcation of the path can be done using your own local materials, dead wood or some, some logs of trees and then these local stones and all that. That creates a nice uh, walking path. It's natural though, it might not look that neat. In reality, this is, how, this is how it should be done. For fanatical gardens, gardeners like me and all, I don't believe in fetching stuff from far away and putting it, arranging it neat, rows and all that. I like this natural look. It immensely enhances the biodiversity of your garden because all those other critters, ants, millipedes, and uh, those, uh, under, those small, small uh, little insects and all that live on the earth's surface and little bit underground, they all need to be there. They have a role. So their habitat is created, it's eco-friendly, it will enrich your soil as it decomposes. And to my eyes at least, it looks quite nice. So this, I recommend this, it's eco-friendly, cheap, natural. And uh, it is the best way to mark your walking paths. And boundaries of vegetable uh, patches and all, you can use this pieces of wood.